Hi, we're, today we're going to talk about some hand tools and um, of course <clears throat> as with any of our, our uh, workshop type operations I've already gotten my my safety glasses on and I'm ready to go here I'll probably take my take my tie here and uh, <clears throat> tuck it in my shirt here so it stays out of trouble um, if I had, of course if I had long flowing hair I would tie it back those kinds of things maybe roll up my sleeves and uh, <clears throat> get ready to go. Um, first thing we're going to talk about is the, um, the hammer, ball peen hammer. You know about this, this face of the ball peen hammer is for hammering stuff. This side is for working with metal, possibly uh, shaping metal or uh, rounding off rivets and stuff like that. Uh, <clears throat> we'll start also with this called the center punch. If you look carefully at this at this part right here, the point of the punch is uh, a very blunt point. It's very tough, which means if we hammer that into a piece of metal, we should be able to create a nice little dent in a piece of metal by hammering on that, that center punch. I'm going to use this, this piece of steel right here as an example. It's about an eighth of an inch thick. And if I want to drill a hole in this, if I take my drill and start drilling, the drill bit tends to just slide around on the surface, wander around on the surface as we call it, and we want the drill bit to bite in and take hold at a given point. So if I've measured it carefully and I've got a spot where I want this to, to take hold, I'm going to get my center punch right on that spot, give it a good whack, and then it may be hard to see in this shot, but there is a nice little sharp dent in that uh, metal. We see that all right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So that's a center punch mark, and that would be good if we were going to drill this piece of metal. It would keep the keep the drill bit from moving around, and it would actually get it to go right into that thing. So that would be the center of our hole. Another example of some hand tools um, is is the scratch all. Unlike the center punch, this has a really long tapered sharp point. This is not for driving into stuff. We're not going to take this and whack it with a hammer. This is mostly intended, as the name indicates, scratch all, for scratching marks into the surface of material. So if I want to make a mark um, on this piece of wood, I can simply take this and scratch it like that. Right? Now, that's kind of crooked, but you can see it easily makes a scratch in this soft surface of the wood. Also, if I want to make a mark on a piece of metal, I can make a mark like this. I'll use this as a straight edge. And I'm going to mark this this piece of metal and cut it. So I get it like that, nice and tight, down to the metal. I have to, you have to scratch with some effort there, and you can see, particularly in contrast to the rusty surface of the metal, I have a nice clean scratch going across the metal, and I can use that to cut. This sheet metal, as it's called, um, this is also steel. This is a piece of steel. This is a piece of steel. This one is anything less than a sixteenth of an inch thick is considered sheet metal. This is probably about uh, 20 gauge or 22, 22 gauge um, sheet metal, sheet steel. Um, so it's a good bit less than a six, 16 gauge um, will be about the thickest sheet metal before you start to call it plate steel. Okay, now we've got a, a couple different pairs of snips. I'm going I'm to cut that in a second. But first, Let's look at these uh, aviation snips. Aviation snips have this construction here where the handles come up and then the, the jaws are, are mounted in here. You got a few different pivot points here. And this, this construction here allows a little greater force multiplication than if this was just a simple scissor type mechanism. Okay? Um, so, uh, you know, the jaws of this are able to cut sheet metal, and we have three different types. This one is considered a uh, left-hand shear um, because it's uh, got the got the red color handles. Left hand, the green the green colored handles are considered a right-handed shear, and the yellow are considered a uh, straight shear. Okay. Now the the way these uh, little jaws are organized or uh, kind of set up with each other. Uh, the one that sort of stands higher, this, this being a left-hand shear, means that the, the right side jaw 
is a little higher than the other one, and it makes it better set to cut to the left. I'm going to cut counterclockwise with these shears. Um, you know, it's, it's not a dramatic difference as to how well they work, but there is a preference. So if I'm, if I'm cutting more to a, in a counterclockwise direction, then these are going to do it better. If I'm cutting more in a clockwise direction, these are going to do it better. And close, if I'm closer to straight, then the straight ones, which have kind of no preference of one higher than the other, are going to do it better. So let's cut this piece of metal then. Uh, first, I'm going, to, I'm going to show I we can cut a curve here. If I've got this piece of metal like this, and I kind of, it kind of cuts in here. I, I don't want to try to cut all at once. I'm taking little kind of nibbling cuts a little bit at a time. And you can see here, see how that piece of metal is coming off there? It's going to snip off right there. See, I was able to cut that curve. I can also cut straight on this line. little bit at a time and it takes a little bit I'm, I am exerting a bit of force with my hands here to make this cut and you can see that these snips then are able to cut the sheet metal. of course with the sheet metal it makes some really nice sharp edges here so you want to be careful with that you can see I'm holding it this could give you a nice a nasty little cut, so let's be careful with that. Um, let's, let's, next, let's look at the coping saw. 